Previously we've had a look at resistance and here we're going to be looking at a very closely related but quite distinct quantity that is resistivity. So you can see from the name it's very closely related to resistance but it is different and we'll see how by the end of this. There's also an equation which links resistivity with resistance. Uh, so our definition for resistivity is it is the resistance of a sample multiplied by its cross-sectional area divided by its length. Now that really is just a wordy, de uh, wordy version of the equation which we see here. So the symbol we use for resistivity is this rho, it's a Greek letter, is equal to the resistance of a sample multiplied by the area divided by the length. Um, so this doesn't really tell us much. Um, so the way to think about resistivity is to think of it as an analogy to Young modulus. So I'm going to split this side down in two, and then on each side I'm going to divide that in two again. And what I'm going to do is on this side I'm going to talk about stretchiness. And on this side oh, no, not yellow. On this side I'm going to talk about uh, movement of charge. So hopefully this will allow us to see a bit more readily the uh, differences between resistance and resistivity. So I'll start on stretchiness, and this is where we're going to recap Young modulus. So on one part we have K, and on the other we have E. So this is stiffness, and here we have the Young modulus. So the stiffness depends. Uh, the stiffness of a sample depends on the size and shape, and what it's made out of. So the material. The Young modulus. When we do the calculation, so we have uh, the Young modulus is stress over strain, where stress is the force per area and the uh, strain is the uh, change in length divided by the initial length. And so uh, the stiffness force is equal to stiffness times extension. Uh, so the Young modulus is the force over the extension times the length over the area. So we've combined the stress and the strain to reach this version for the Young modulus and we can see that uh, once we substitute uh, K is equal to F over X this is K L over A. So you can see it's the stiffness but it's got these factors to adjust it to take into account the size and shape of the particular sample we get so that the Young modulus doesn't change for a given material. It doesn't depend on the size and shape. It's an intrinsic, uh, intrinsic property of the material that we're looking at. So the Young modulus for copper will be fixed regardless of the size or shape. And what we see with resistance and resistivity is something very similar. Um, so we get that uh, the resistivity is Ra over L, and so we can see this is the resistance corrected for the size and shape of the particular sample that we're looking at. So this is, uh, this, so the resistance depended again on the material and the size and shape of what we're looking at. So obviously a long thin wire is going to have a much higher resistance than a short fat wire. We can think of this by looking back at the analogy between uh, flow of charge and flow of water. So if we've got a long thin hose pipe 
we're going to take quite it's going to take quite a bit to uh, drive some water through there compared to a short fat hose pipe and we see the same with the resistance uh, the resistivity is the intrinsic property of the material how resistance how much does this particular material resist the flow of charge through it how much does it resist charge uh, resist current flowing through it um, and we do that with this equation taking into account the size and shape of it. Uh, so we can nip back to here. Now we've got a slightly better understanding of what resistivity is. We can make sure we've defined each of these terms. And so the R, that is the resistance, and therefore is measured in ohms. The A, this is the cross-sectional area of the material that we're looking at. So if we had a long thin wire or not so thin or thick or however you like if we imagine uh, this is the cross section of it so if it's cylindrical in shape this area is the cross sectional area if it was square in cross section so we might have something like this then this is the cross sectional area if that's if we're passing current along the length like this. If we were passing the current uh, on this sample, if we were passing the current along here, then this would be the length and it would be this side that is the cross-sectional area. So what's the area that's perpendicular to the flow of the current? So this is the cross-sectional area. And being an area, it's just measured in meters squared. This is the length that we just hinted at here. And being just a length is measured in meters. And this rho is the resistivity that we've been talking about. Um, and for the units, we can see we're going to have ohms times meters squared divided by meters, which gives us ohm meters. So this is the equation we use which links, which takes the resistance of some sample, factors in the size and shape of that sample to tell us what is the basic resistivity, what's the intrinsic amount that this particular material resists the flow of charge. And now we can have a quick look at an example. So here the question we're told, determine the resistance of a copper wire of length 1.5 meters, uniform diameter, given that this is the resistivity of the copper. So if we have a look at the equation we just had up, we start from rho equals R A over L, except this question asks for the resistance, so we're going to have to rearrange this, and we get R is uh, rho L over A. So now we just need to, this rho we're given here, and that can come in here. The length of the sample we're also given in the question. So this 1.5 meters we just stick in here. And so all that we've got left to do is work out the cross-sectional area having been given the diameter. So we know uh, if it's a diameter we're going to take it as a circle. So the area is pi r squared. We're given the diameter, uh, so we need to change that to pi into the diameter divided by 2 squared, and this gives us pi times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. So being careful with the units, this is in millimeters. We square that, and that gives us a value of the area of 1.9635 meters times 10 to the minus 7 meters squared. Finally, we stick all of this back into this equation we've got up here, and out co comes a value of 0.12834 ohms. So here we can see this is a fairly straightforward equation which links up, uh, which takes us from the resistance of some sample factors in the shape give us this new property we've introduced, the resistivity. So just like Young modulus is the intrinsic stretchiness, how all stiffness, uh, stiffness of a material, uh, the 
resistivity is the intrinsic resistance of a material. So just looking at the property of this material, not taking into account the size and shape of the particular sample we look at. And we use this equation to then take us to work out the resistance of the sample that we are looking at at that point in time. Just like uh, in the Young modulus, we use the stress uh, and the strain, we could use the length and the cross-sectional area to work out the stiffness of the sample that we were actually looking at if we wished to do so.